A Senate Democrat says the wrap-up of the Mueller investigation is not the beginning of the end, but just the end of the beginning. Joining us now from Atlanta, the top Republican on the House Judiciary Committee, Doug Collins. Congressman, welcome to Fox News Sunday. Good morning, Chris. Good to be with you. To what degree, I understand it's very early, to what degree do you think what we have heard so far about the special counsel's report clears the president, especially the fact that the, there's been a decision made not only not to indict the president, but also not to indict, for instance, on issues of collusion, any of the top people around him? I believe it is, goes to what we've been talking about for a long time and what the president's been saying from the beginning, that there was no collusion. What we have so far in the indications out of the Department of Justice of no more indictments, I'm waiting to see the uh, conclusions that Bill Barr is going to give us, hopefully as early as today. As we see those, then we can actually uh, show to the American people what the investigation meant and how far it went, and also the fact that now we can hopefully begin to move on from these uh, two-year cloud of an investigation in which uh, a lot was gone into to prove the president. Now we're seeing that the collusion is not, and now we can move forward. You say move on. You just heard my interview with your chairman, Gerald Nadler. He makes it clear he intends to keep investigating not only other issues, but also to keep investigating collusion, obstruction of justice, all of the issues that the special counsel was looking at. Well, that's all they have. Obviously, we've seen in the first two months of this Congress, they really don't have a policy agenda. They have an agenda against the president. They have an agenda to try and win 2020. And so what we're seeing is, is they think that they can go into the Judiciary Committee or any other committee and have a limited budget, limited subpoena power, limited staff, and go up against an investigation that lasted 22 months, had unlimited uh, power, and limited subpoena power, had plenty of investigators, and they think they can find something more than what they did, then I think they're sadly mistaken, and I think the American people will see through that. What about the argument that you heard from Chairman Nadler? Look, the special counsel has his role. We have, we, the, the Democrats, the Congress has its role, which is different and broader. I think it might be just a different, what he's saying is, is he keeps going back to the rule of law and they're different uh, for purposes. If Mr. Nadler is saying that our, our committee is supposed to be a paintbrush that just simply tries to taint the presidency and paint the presidency with doubt and innuendo, then I would disagree with that. That's an abuse of power. That's not something the committee ought to be doing. And I think we also have to respect what the uh, Department of Justice and Mr. Mueller has been doing. If we do that, then the American people can see we are respecting the rule of law. Now, as we were just talking about, Democrats are demanding not only the release of the full report, but also all underlying materials. You have said the same thing, but you have added this phrase that you want to see it all released, quote, to the maximum extent permitted by the law. What do you think are the limits permitted well, the by limits the law? No, Chris, I think that's a great question. I think the American people deserve to understand, and it's amazing to hear my chairman say that he wants everything out there. Well, I would ask my chairman, does he include classified information, which has never been released to the American public? Would he include 6E, which is grand jury information, things that are normally never released to the public outside, a really outside of a special order from the court? Would he want to do the things that, uh, you know, would actually get into ongoing investigations? I think the problem is, is the Democrats and my chairman have a problem. They thought this report was going to show something they could impeach the president on. That is not seemingly going to happen. Now they have to figure out some way around that. And I think when you understand that, for him to make a broad statement of what they want released, that's not fair to the American public. And it uh, will, and really, they're trying to taint what is coming out by not saying what should not come out to the public because of what I've just listed. But, you know, there's, there are other areas besides grand jury testimony or classified material. Democrats say that the president is in a unique legal position. They say, on the one hand, that the Justice Department regulations are they don't release information on people they're not going to charge, but also the department regulations say they can't charge the president. So, you know, there is, as I say, this kind of, of, of self-contradictory uh, basis there, isn't it legitimate to argue that even if there's damaging information in the president, to the president that does not rise to the, uh, the level of an indictment, that it should be turned over to Congress to take a look at? Well, it's not the Department of Justice's job to give Chairman Nadler and the, and the House Judiciary or any committee on the House, and, or the Senate for that matter, you know, what they want to do to go off on a purely partisan uh, investigation that might to lead toward impeachment. Let's, let's also understand clearly, if these were findings have not been made yet, there's been no finding that that was the reason 
uh, that you couldn't indict a sitting president is the reason why there's no more indictments coming forward. Let's be honest with the facts and say probably what the facts showed was that there was no collusion. Let's go to the logical choice that nothing happened. And it was sort of amazing to hear the chairman say things that we do know. Again, basically when you talk about the collusion was happening, meetings were happening, that all of this was going on, again, to simply sully what, the, what they had been called the best investigation around and not to touch the Mueller investigation, when it comes back not what they want, now they've decided that they can just try to go around it and draw implications so that others can doubt it. That's just wrong. Uh, Congressman Collins, President Trump tweeted uh, and called the Mueller investigation a witch hunt. Uh, something called the Trump Twitter Archive says that in his presidency he has tweeted that phrase, witch hunt, 183 times. But let's look at what the Mueller investigation has found. Uh, his team indicted convicted or got guilty pleas from 34 people and three companies. His former national security advisor pleaded guilty. So did his former fixer. His former campaign chairman was convicted and a longtime advisor, Roger Stone, faces charges of lying to Congress. Congressman Collins, I agree that there has been no action and apparently will be no action taken against the president by the Justice Department. But would you agree that this was no hoax? I think it was, what the president was saying was is, is since he was elected, there have been calls for impeachment in every kind of investigation. And I think the, what he was lashing out was is saying, look, this is not, we won an election, and he won the election, in many opinion, fair and square, doing what people do to win elections, go and convince people to vote for him and visit every state in the union and not skip states. What we see here, though, is an investigation in which people who lied were held accountable, who people who were investigated are now being held under the rule of law. At what point does that not make the investigation any less valid in the sense that they did what they saw on others, but also found that in their main core of the collusion or investigation or obstruction, they are seemingly coming to the point that the president and those around him had nothing to do with this. The other charges, except for those indicted with the Russians, which we'll probably never see in court in the United States, that is the core finding, at least of what we're seeing so far. Remember, that report and those findings are still coming out, and we'll see. But at this point, the president has been proved right. I think he was obviously frustrated during this time, and rightfully so, as this report seems to show. But Michael Flynn was convicted of lying about his dealings with the Russians. Michael Cohen was convicted of lying about his dealings with the Russians. Roger Stone has been indicted for a a allegedly lying about his contacts with WikiLeaks, which got information from the Russians. Don't you find that, again, not saying that this proves anything about the president, but don't you find it curious that three people so close to the president allegedly or uh, ha have been convicted of lying for their dealings with the Russians? I think it just shows you had three people who chose to lie to investigators when nobody uh, told them to lie to investigators as far as anything has been pointed out. When you have people lie to uh, the investigators, when you have people lie to the FBI, Department of Justice, then there's going to be consequences to pay for that. To go into the reasons why they chose to lie um, is simply something that you would need to ask all three of them. We still need the larger picture, which the Democrats want to just paint the president with, with these others, is a simple fact at the end of the day, if this report comes back as it seems to be coming back, that there was no collusion on uh, the president or the part of the campaign, then that is the part that we need to take and move from here. Why people lie, Chris, that's a, a discussion for them and their lawyers and why they chose to do that. And, and I, I, I've got about 30 seconds left. What do you think the reaction of the American people is going to be if the House Democrats, as intended, uh, seem, continue investigations for the next year or so? I think it's going to play badly for them, but if that's the way they choose to make their case to the American people that they deserve to be in power in the House, then that's something that they're going to have to concentrate on. We're going to continue to concentrate on one of the greatest economies that we've seen in years. We're going to concentrate on the fact that deregulation works. And I think if they want to go down this path, we're going to meet them with strong resistance because there is a certain time that this is just a, a rabbit chase that they're wanting to go on a fishing expedition, and we will be meeting that as it comes up. Assuredly, the American people will see through political stunts like that. I like rabbit chases as well as fishing expeditions. <laughs> <laughs> Congressman Collins, thank you. Thanks for joining us today. Please come back, sir. Chris, look forward to it. Take care.